Hi, today we're going to read a non-fiction book, informational book called Rocky Mountain National Park. But before we do that, let's learn a little background knowledge. Because we live in Georgia, and the Rocky Nas Mountain National Park is nowhere near where we are. So, here we go. Here is our focus question. Where is Rocky Mountain National Park and what can visitors see and do there? First, what is a national park? A national park is an area set aside by a federal government for the preservation of a national natural environment. Where is Rocky Mountain National Park? Rocky Mountain National Park is in the state of Colorado, which is over here. And here is Georgia. So you can see that it is on the other side of the state of the country than we are. It would, probably, it would be, most likely be, if you wanted to go there, a plane ride. Unless you were very adventurous. So here are some words that you might, you're going to see in the book. We have the word range. A mountain range is a long row of mountains that are all connected. So the Rocky Mountains, as you can see, are one big long range. They go from Canada all the way down to Mexico. You have a peak. A peak is the top of a mountain. Then we're going to talk about a glacier. A glacier is a big piece of ice. Here are some animals you might see in the Rocky Mountain National Park. We have elk, a mountain lion, a moose, a marmot, a black bear, a bighorn sheep, a ptarmigan, and a western tanager. I don't know if I said that right. Let's get back to this book. So here we go. This book is Rocky Mountain National Park. It is, like I said, an informational text. It is written by Sean McCollum. And all the, instead of illustrations, there are for photos. So like, uh, where is Rocky Mountain National Park and what can visitors see and do there? Our table of context shows that there's going to be one, two, three, four, five different chapters in a glossary. So, here we go. Rock, the best Rocky Mountains of the Rockies. The Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado shows off the best of the Rocky Mountains. The park includes 415 square miles of natural beauty. The air is fresh and clean. It features mountain lakes that mirror high peaks above them. Remember, the peaks are the top of the mountain. The park is home to mountain lions, moose, marmots, and many other wild animals. Its sites are within reach of nature lovers, whether they are traveling by car or walking in hiking boots. Young Mountains. Rocky Mountain National Park is a small part of the Rocky Mountain Range. The Rockies, as they are called, stretch 3,000 miles from Canada to New Mexico. Compared to other mountain ranges, the Rockies are young. They were pushed up between 165 million years ago. 
Later on, glaciers moved downhill and carved out their peaks. Let's think, what are the Rocky Mountains? Well, they are a mountain range. And how are they different from other mountains? They are young. Even though I don't know why I would consider 165 million years as young. The Rocky Mountains form much of the continental divide. That is the rocky spine that runs along in North America and divides the way the water flows. The water on the western side flows towards the Pacific Ocean. The water on the eastern side flows towards the Atlantic Ocean. What is the continental divide and how does it affect the water flow? He said it divides the country away and divides where how the water flows. On this west side, it goes towards the Pacific. On the west, it goes towards the Pacific. On the east, it goes towards the Atlantic. From Moose to Marmot, Rocky Mountain National Park has several different environments. It has wet areas and forests of pines and aspen trees, mountain wildfires, dark grassy meadows with bright flowers in the summer. The trees stop growing at about 11,500 feet. This is called the tree line. Higher than that, the weather is too stormy and the soil is too rocky for trees to grow. You have, oops, let's do it You have your mountain. There's your mountain. Let me make my mountain up here. You have my mountain. And up here is the tree line. So my trees can grow here. If they don't grow past this blue line. Different areas in Rocky Mountain National Park provide homes for different animals. Elk and deer feed along forest edges. Moose wade in watery places and chop plants there. Bobcats and mountain lions live in the park too, along with a few black bears. Some animals live above the tree line. They include bighorn sheep, the state animal, Colorado state animal. Marmots are one of the largest members of the squirrel family. They can be spotted on warm, sunny rocks, squeaking loudly if danger is near. In rocky places, peeka dash around. They look like big hamsters or are related to rabbits. About 280 kinds of birds have been seen in RMNP. They include eagles and ravens, which ride on mountain winds. Ptarmigans are great at hiding in the open. In the summer, they are brown. This is what they look like in the summer. Right here. And in the winter, they turn white to hide in the snow. Their feathers turn white and they blend into the snow. Plan a visit. A visit to Rocky Mountain National Park can be carefree or full of adventure. Inside the park, the roads allow drivers to enjoy great views. Trail Bridge Road is the highest paved road in any U.S. national park. It climbs up and over the Continental Divide. It reaches more than 12,000 feet, which is 3,658 miles. Meters, sorry. This road is closed in the winter when the snow drifts can be more than 20 feet deep. That might be taller than some of people's houses. For people who want to leave the sound of traffic behind, RMNP has hundreds of trails of hundreds of miles of trails, hiking trails. 
Some hikers pitch tents near mountain lakes and rushing creeks. Others follow the rocky paths that turn to mountaintops. At 14,259 feet, Long Peak is the park's tallest mountain. Hikers must be very fit to climb. We look here. This is a picture of some of the things you might need to climb the mountains. Autumn is a very special time to visit the park. Aspen leaves turn bright yellow. In September and October, people come to watch and hear bull elk. During this time of year, they attract females known as cows with high-pitched calls. Each year, bull elk shed their antlers and grow a new set. The more points on their antlers, the older the elk. History of the Rocky Mountain National Park Ute, Arapaho, and other native peoples once lived and traveled around the land that is now the Rocky Mountain National Park. Some spent separate summers camped in the beautiful valleys. Settlers and gold seekers began arriving in this part of the Rockies in the mid-1800s. For settlers headed west, these same mountains were big challenges. They had to drive their wagons over steep passes, other built mining towns, including Estes Park near what later became one of the park's entrances. In 1915, Woodrow Wilson signed the law creating Rocky Mountain National Park. It was followed by a building boom of lodges and roads nearby. However, much of RM RMNP is still surrounded by forests and wilderness areas. Rocky Mountain National Park is one of the most popular national parks in the United States. Every year, more than 4 million people visit from around the world. During the summer months, the park can seem overcrowded. Sometimes there are traffic jams. Many people now ride buses inside the park rather than drive their cars. Okay, so this is when it opened. And this is the year 2015. You can see how it, the chart shows that it grows. And in the peak before in 2015, there was 4 million visitors. Still, anyone willing to lace up their hiking boot can go on an adventure to this park. It is a national and natural treasure. In what season would you like to most visit the park? Draw a picture of it and write about it. Fold a piece of paper and then open fold it and lay it face down. Push the hands together to see how the Rocky Mountains form. Discuss what you notice with a park partner. So, what was the, we're going to talk about the purpose, the author's purpose. The author's purpose is why they wrote the book. Sometimes they write to inform, sometimes they write to persuade, or they wrote to entertain. Why do you think Sean McCollum wrote this book? Do you think he was trying to inform us? Do you think he was trying to persuade us of something? Or do you think he was trying to in entertain us? So we have inform, inform. Persuade. I believe that he was trying to persuade, uh, not persuade, inform us about 
Love Rocky. Yeah.